Hey everybody, welcome to Router 2 Brief. Uh, we do a little live stream here. I'm going to talk about <clears throat> the update in the tank and basically what I'm going to do to lower um, some of the nitrates in my aquarium and the green algae. So as you guys know, by the way, if you haven't subscribed, please do give the video a like and it's crazy Freddy. Everyone's starting to pop in. What's up you guys? Yeah, this is a live stream, so I get to see the comments on the screen as they come up. But people watching non-live stream, of course, you can't see them, which kind of sucks. Anyway, I just want to give you guys a quick update because um, currently updating my, changing my internet service provider. So any few minutes now, we're going to go off the air because I won't have Wi-Fi while they're doing the install currently. So thought I would do this quick show. Uh, as this is about lowering nitrates and trying to control the green algae on your aquarium glass So I'm gonna be talking so if you guys ask questions, I may not see them. So just chat amongst yourselves Glad to see you Christmas is coming Got the tree up crazy how time is flying Don't forget to uh, check out the video description and all the videos to join the Facebook group router to brief Awesome, you guys. We're getting close to 300 subscribers, and people are posting daily on that with questions and videos and photos of their tanks. It's really awesome. So click on the link in the video description below to join that group. Thank you all for joining, and thank you so much for making the community totally awesome. I'm proud of it, and I'm happy that you guys want to be part of it. Okay, so as you guys know, I don't really like to dose things in my tank, like you know alkalinity magnesium all that i don't do anything i don't use carbon i don't do anything uh, it's just me i'm not saying it's wrong i will never say anything is wrong unless i know it's wrong and the only thing i've really said is wrong is to put a fish in your tank before you quarantine it um and the whole ick thing the ick parasite thing but anyway it's just me I i've got so much going on in life i want to do as little as possible for tank maintenance and i like to rely on mother nature um, and biology, um, bacteria on the rock, as all you guys do, and in the sand, and it's on your glass, and it's everywhere, and that breaks down the fish, urine, and uneaten food. Another thing that'll break down those wastes is a cleanup crew, like crabs and snails and all that good stuff. I don't have a cleanup crew. I've got two snails, and that's it. I have no crabs. That sounds weird, doesn't it? Well, I don't have crabs in my tank either. So, I stopped carrying those guys about two years ago. I just don't have them. They weren't doing too much for me. I wanted to see what it's like without it. And to be honest, not, much too, not too much difference. So, what I wanted to talk today, and I'll do a more in-depth video, but my thought is, and it works, is uh, copepods. And copepods are those little tiny bugs that are very small that every reef keeper sees and they freak out about. What are those bugs on my... Oh, these guys are playing. What are these What are these little bugs on my glass? They're very tiny, very, very tiny. Like if you trim your fingernails, about a third the size of a fingernail would be the size of a large one. They're almost see-through little white bugs. You can see them crawling all over your rocks and your sand and your rock. And the more you have, the better. They're very beneficial to your aquarium. And if you have a mandarin fish like I do, uh, he's in the back, but I can't. Can you guys see him? He always hides. That guy always hides when he's. I try to get him on video. Anyway, mandarins eat copepods, and if you don't have them in your tank, a good population, they will die. There, he, there he is. Oh, he's he swam away again. Okay, so. Copepods will live everywhere on your glass. They mainly come out at night on the rocks in the sand if you Look closely you'll see them. They also live a lot on the glass. I have not seen any on this glass What someone said what kind of copepods do you have? Well, I'm gonna answer that in a minute um, Oh you cliff just got a red mandarin Awesome so I had copepods all in this glass, all over here, and I have not seen any. I mean, I know they're still in there. You know where I've got thousands of them? In this rock here. In this rock. I put a flashlight in there, and they're all in there. They 
breed in here, which is great. My Mandarin I've had for close to two years. He's doing really well. But I need to populate this tank with more copepods for the Mandarin. But another great reason to have copepods in your tank is because they eat the detritus, which is fish waste and uneaten food and all the other microscopic stuff that swims in your tank. And then they breed, and that's fish for your Mandarin. And the more they breed the more of a little tiny cleanup crew you have. And people have raved about having a lot of copepods in their tank because they do an outstanding job. They also feed on the algae. And anything that breaks down to start that process of algae. Hey, what's up, Bronx Reefer? I don't have my glasses on. Bronx Reefer, Brock. Um, so what I did is I placed an order and I ordered through Algae Barn. And I love Algae Barn. Uh, algebarn.com I was working with one of the guys Sean he reached out to me he saw the channel he saw the tangs he loves these guys and uh, Sean if you're watching what's up so he was kind enough to give me some food for the tangs I think it's some kind of really um, high nutrient nori I can't remember what he said in the email but he said they're gonna love it and they'll go crazy for it so I ordered um, copepods a bag of 5200 copepods and they've got a deal now where if you have not i'm not getting paid to say this by the way but if you have never ordered from them or you're a first time customer and you sign up if you get the package which comes with a bag of copepods i think it's like uh, 42 dollars sounds a little pricey but they'll it's worth it and then you get the um plankton phytoplankton to feed those copepods they double your order so you get another bag of them so i've got ten thousand copepods coming with two bottles of the plankton to feed those copepods copepods will also of course like i said feed on detritus and everything in your tank so think of them as like a microscopic tiny little cleanup crew and they breed rapidly now someone had asked what kind of copepods i got and i'm not an expert with them by any means but i know that there's one type of copepod that they don't breed rapidly and they die out kind of quick they act as food source for the mandarin but there's two other types that come packaged with green uh the algae barn guys and that's algebarn.com again by the way and those thrive in your tank they live a long time they breed rapidly and they don't die out quickly I can't remember the name of them. I'll have to look it up and put it in the comments. And I'll put a link to what I ordered from Algae Barn as well. So that order should be coming. It's going to ship on Monday. Should be getting here within two days because it's a live item. Uh, also, of course, there's no fish in their water, so you don't have to, you know, worry about ick or any parasites. You just put the copepods, just dump them right in. Now, when you dump in your copepods, when you're seeding your tank. You want to turn off your protein skimmers and you want to do it at night with your lights off because if the fish see those little guys coming in, they're going to go nuts and they're going to gobble them all up. When you get your order, you're going to see that the bag looks like it's just filled with water. If you look close enough, you'll see tons and tons of little red dots about the size of like if you took a pencil and made a dot on your loose leaf paper how small these guys are but they do grow uh, and they breed rather quickly you can also get copepods in your tank naturally if you buy live rock from your reef store or you get it from someone's tank so copepods will show up in your tank and as your tank matures like i said a lot of reefers will freak out and say oh my god there's bugs all over my rock how do i get rid of these things it looks just like a bunch of tiny microscopic clear see-through bugs and scattering all over I think someone said they accidentally killed their mandarin fish, uh, the dragonette, because they didn't have enough copepods in their tank. That's true. Mandarins, you know, people said that they eat frozen food. Uh, I don't see it with my guy. They will deplete your copepod population at a rapid rate. They can eat thousands of them a day. All they do is scavenge the rocks, and they eat those things. So if you've got at least a 75-gallon tank... Um, 
and you've got a lot of copepods, your mandarin will do well. They say one mandarin for every 125 gallons, or one mandarin for every 75 gallons, preferably one mandarin fish for every 125 gallons to make sure there's enough population. My brother actually had a mandarin in his 28 gallon JBJ, and it was fine. I was a little shocked, but he had enough copepods, and he didn't even seed that tank was new copepods. I am going to seed this tank because I want to see them on the glass. I want to see them crawling around. I want to see a large population. Plus, I'm really anxious and excited to see what they do with this green algae issue, which is under control a lot more than it was. Um, this rock, for example, I would scrape it off with a toothbrush and the algae would come back in a day. It's not there anymore. And it's been a week. So algae um, is getting more under control. And I think ever since I added that second protein skimmer underneath here and the second sump, it does an awful lot. Because I'm pulling out double the sludge. Uh, I've got both protein skimmers, as you guys know, rated for 500 gallons. So I've got enough power to skim 500 gallons. And this is only a 125-gallon aquarium. So that's the deal. I'm looking forward to that order coming in. Um, I'm going to put those copepods in at night, lights out, protein skimmers off, let them settle in the rock work. You're going to float the bag. Then after I float the bag to get them used to the temperature, I'm going to release them all. I'm going to put all 1,000 in. It's Oh, no, 10,000. Each bag has got 5,200, so that's going to be awesome. They're going to breed like crazy. It's going to be great. Uh, what else was I going to tell you? Yeah, do not. If you order the copepods, put them in right away. Um, keep them at room temperature, around tank temperature, like in the basement if you need to store them. Do not put them in the refrigerator. They will die. But it's okay to put the phytoplankton in. And the phytoplankton just looks like green liquid. You want to be careful when you dose the phytoplankton, which is their food source. And it's in the ocean, in the reef, and it's in your tank. But you can, of course, put uh, phytoplankton in there to feed those guys, to give them extra source of food. Because, like I said, they'll, they'll feed on the detritus, cleaning up your tank, which is the fish waste and all the uneaten food. Um, what else? If you dose the phytoplankton to feed those guys, the bottle that I got says once every other day. Um, I'm going to do it once every few days, maybe once a week only, because extra food in your tank, as you know, will increase the phosphate levels. You don't want that, which will increase your green algae. Yes, I will put a link to where I ordered the copepods to Algae Barn, the phytoplankton and the copepods i'll put a link for you guys after this probably in the next hour so check out the video description i'm gonna put a link leia it's okay i'm gonna put a link to um where i got the copepods and the phytoplankton you can get phytoplankton from your local reef store you don't have to go through algae barn but i am another nice thing with algae barn that i took advantage of is if you order automatically i have a two month ordering where i'm gonna have i think it's a little too often but i'm gonna try it every two months i'll have an order of copepods just a bag of 5200 and the phytoplankton shipped to me from the algae barn so every two months i'll get an order up to, to reseed my tank and always have like a ton of copepods in here um, nice thing about that, I think they give you a discount if you do, yeah, they do give you on the automatic shipment. You can do weekly, bi-weekly, the furthest out you can go is two months. So I selected the two months, um, and we'll see how that goes. But I have not added copepods to this in over a year, about a year and a half. And it's time, because I, I've not seen any in here. When you can visibly see them, that's when you've got a lot. And I'm thinking the more you've got, the more algae is going to be eaten and the more fish waste is going to be eaten. So that's going to be my cleanup crew. And they're going to serve as a food source to the Mandarin. Someone just posted something. I didn't see it. 
Hey, Darren, what's up, dude? Just talking about Copapods. I got a Copapod order coming from Algae Barn. I absolutely love those guys. Customer service is outstanding. I'm not getting paid to say this. I just wanted to pass on what I'm doing, and that's, that's my cleanup crew. I have two snails in this tank, and that's all I've got. Two snails. I got nothing else. Um, well, I got my fire shrimp. That's it. So the guys at Algae Barn are, have been kind enough. They saw my videos. They love the tangs. They're going to be giving me some nori and some other special food for those guys and a little bit of extra phytoplankton, which is so cool of them. So... Okay, so Darren just said he's used Algae Burn before and he loves them. I really love them. Customer service is great. They send you an email um, saying your order is going to be shipped, when it's going to be shipped, when to look for it. I also got a follow-up email from Sean just saying, hey, any questions, let me know. And he said, by the way, I saw your channel. I love the fish. The tank looks great. And he's going to give me some extra food for those guys. So check out Algae Burn. Check if you want uh, to try the copepods. Rave reviews on those guys and putting copepods in your tank. They really help. Like I said, I'm a huge supporter of letting Mother Nature and biology take care of my tank. I don't want to rely on dosing chemicals or using ChemiPure or anything like that. I'm not saying that's bad. That stuff is outstanding. But I like to rely on the more simple Adam just said his glass is covered with copepods. That's awesome. I haven't seen copepods in my tank. Um, yes, this company is in the USA, but I think they ship out of the United States too. But you can get copepods from a local reef store. I'm just going with Algae Barn because prices are really good. I love their customer service, and I ordered from them before. Um, I actually used them to seed this tank to build the population when I got my mandarin goby fish because I was a little nervous that his food source would run out. And he's been totally fine. Um, but now that I've had this little algae outbreak, I really I want to push the population to the max. Um, green algae is doing a lot better, but it's still on the glass. I think you guys you guys can see it. Green hair algae is still on the rocks a little bit, but it's only because I have not brushed it off with a toothbrush. Every area that I've brushed off with a toothbrush has stayed gone. Um, the corals are still waking up because I just turned the light on to do this video. So you've got some green algae here. That's nasty. You don't want that in your tank. Algae turns into green algae. I got to get in there with a toothbrush and, and scrape that stuff off. It's really easy to come off. I can actually pull it off with my fingers. Um, so I'm going to do an experiment too because if the, these copepods eat the detritus and the uneaten food, technically my nitrates should go down too. So I'm going to stop the sugar dosing after a few weeks of having the copepods in this tank and I'll report back to you my findings on that. I don't want to sugar dose. It works outstanding. So does vinegar and vodka in your tank if you're trying to lower your nitrates. But I really want to get away from that because I'm tired of seeing that extra buildup of mulm, that spider webby, gross, disgusting snot that's all over my tank and the sump. Um, I've cut back on the dosing, but I really, really am looking forward to these little copepod guys um, crawling all over everywhere. So that's all I've really got. If you guys have any questions or your experiences with copepods, let me know. And I'll do another video on copepods and what they look like and how they work on another video. Yeah, Dave, that's right. Copepods will control their own population based on algae and food in the tank. So um, if you just keep loading and loading and loading and loading and loading your tank with copepods, they will control their population based on the food source. So I do have a lot for them to eat. 
And I've got a mandarin that needs to fatten up a little bit. Even though he's doing really well, I want to fatten that guy up a little bit. So they also serve as a food source to other fish too. Because tangs, you guys know tangs go around and they pick on the rocks. And they eat algae and they eat copepods too. They love them. Great food source for the fish. And great little cleanup crew. So that's that's kind of my plan. Um, there's the tank. It's doing well. I'm going to do my water change later on today. And uh, Merry Christmas to you too, Dave. We're going to do some more. I'm thinking about doing these live videos every Saturday or most Saturdays. I like to have a definite time so you you know you guys can you know look forward to it and know that it's coming out. But you know I do videos every Saturday, Saturday morning. Um, lately they've been like live chats because uh, I like talking with you guys and I like that you guys chat with each other, bring the community together. Hydro guy wishes he could have a tank this big. You can, man. I mean, that's what I thought. I started out in a, with a 28-gallon by JBJ, and I loved it so much. And then I, I'm like, damn, I want to get a, uh, a tang. And I got a yellow tang, put him in, and I, I really, I kind of busted the bank on getting a 75-gallon tank. It's like, man, what am I doing spending this kind of money? Because I don't have a lot of money at all. And I decided... Sorry, I'm trying to read comments as they come through. I decided I'm just I, I'm gonna do it. I love the hobby. I'm gonna do it. So I got a 75 gallon, and it was like, wow, this is awesome. Highly recommend the 75 gallon. But if you really, if you like the hobby, and you've got the room, this is six feet wide. I would really recommend a 125 gallon. Just spend a little more, and get it. 375 gallons is Darren's next build. Show off. I would love that. I would love to have like a 256 or 265 and then I'm kind of done. I was kind of thinking about being done with this. Because, you, you know, honestly, you guys, I I love this tank. It's, it's six feet long. If I get another tank, it's not going to be six feet. It's got to be eight. Like Darren's old tank. Uh, but six feet is for the swim room. If I could get like a 300 gallon that's really tall, I would not have it if it's six feet long. Fish swim left to right, and I don't like tall tanks because it's a pain to clean them. I like this because it never gets higher than the elbow. When you're cleaning your tank, you can get down there. I like that. So I want to get an eight foot tank. But to be honest, I'm really happy with this one. And I would only get it so the, the tangs have a little more room to swim. It would be like a, a foot out, a foot deeper, and two feet longer. That would be awesome for them. But I don't know if it's worth it. It's a lot of money. It's like two grand more. I don't want to spend that. I mean, it's not that much money, but it is a lot of money. So we'll see where it goes. Um, someone asked about what lights I have. Thanks, Darren. Your tank was killer. I love. I missed that eight gallon tank. Um, I got this on Amazon where I get most things. An Agro Bright light. It's used in greenhouses. I got the bulbs from Bulk Reef Supply. The ATI bulbs. I think this was like hundred and twenty dollars or something like that. And I got the lights from Bulk Reef Supply. You replace them once a year. I think they're like eighteen dollars a bulb. $15 a bulb, not bad. You do it once a year. I'm not going to do it in January. I'll do it in the summer. And I got these mesh screens. It allows a lot of light in. I got these from Bulk Reef Supply, and they're very light. You can take them off easily. I really love these. The only thing with these is um a lot more water evaporates because your tank does not have a lid on it. So I was topping off water like a half a gallon a day. No, like a half a gallon every three days when I had glass lids. Now I'm doing a gallon to a gallon and a half a day. So I'm doing 
a gallon before bed every night to top it off. I just take a gallon out of my Rubbermaid container and I just dump it in. But this is great because it lets a lot of light in. And these T5s are awesome. I love LEDs, but I love these. Um, two protein skimmers. And I'm looking forward to those Copapods coming in. That's going to be awesome. Ordering bugs online. And I'm excited about damn bugs. <laughs> what? You know, that's just weird. So there's the tank. That's what's going on. I hope you guys are doing well. Like I said, any... Yeah, Adam. Two gallon evaporation a day from his 80 gallon. So, that thanks for reminding me. Um, when I had the glass lids, I really liked them because they had like the hinge. You could feed the food and you put it down. But the glass lids, they're really heavy. They get all gunked up with, uh, you know, salt creep. And salt creep is, you see how the water splashes up here? I just go like this to knock it off. Well, when water splashes up anywhere, salt water, water evaporates, but of course it leaves the solids behind, and that's dirt or salt, because solids don't evaporate into the air. That's science 101. So all that splash from the water hits the glass, and then your glass gets coated with powdered salt and crusted salt, like this stuff here. So the light has a harder time penetrating the glass lid, and you're getting less light in your aquarium. It's not good for your coral. So I got rid of that really fast. I got tired of cleaning them, tired of dealing with them. They're downstairs, and I got these mesh lids. They're a lot lighter. I don't have to clean them. It's awesome. More light gets through. They're much lighter. And I don't have to clean them. Awesome. So that's just one thing I did. And I finally went to the T5s, which I love. LEDs are really sweet, but they're expensive. And I got more growth with these LEDs too. Like I said, look at this. Look at the star polyps, man. This is from one little plug the size of a quarter that I got. And it's coming all the way over here. Look, it's completely, it's coming up all the way on this rock. It wasn't like this before the T5s. Another reason why it's doing really well, Red Sea Coral Pro Salt. It, I'm seeing a difference, I'm telling you. Instant Ocean is awesome, but if you have coral, Red Sea Pro. So between the better salt, which is more expensive, the T5s, better lighting, and the copepods coming, it's going to be awesome. Looking forward to that. So that's all I've got for now, you guys. I'm going to sign off now because uh, I think my internet's going down because I've got the technician out and they're upgrading my... I'm changing internet providers um, to get much faster speeds. So that's going to be great. They actually have fiber in my area. So I'm going to be having like a gig download, which is insane. That's going to be great. So I'm going to test that out. I'll let you know how that goes. They're going to be shutting me down now. And... Um, I'm going to put a link to the things I talked about in this video. Also, don't forget to join the Facebook group if you have not already. All right. And if you have issues with Ick, check out my other Ick videos. I also wrote a book. It's on Amazon. It's like $3. You can buy that from Amazon to help you out. It's like over 40 pages. I go into, into depth on what Ick is and how to kill it forever. All right, you guys. One thing I want to say, too, is I have a lot of fun with you guys. I really appreciate like the cool camaraderie we all have and when I go to Facebook and I see like five people, ten people request to join the Facebook group Rotter Too Brief, which is in the video description link. Again, there's a link to that. It makes me proud. It's like wow, look at all I, I created this. That makes me really happy that you guys like it and you wanna come back and visit and post about your tanks. 
I didn't think Saltwater Aquarium Hobby would be that big when I started this um, four years, five years ago. I don't know. But it is, and you guys make it awesome. I would have quit this channel a long time ago if it wasn't for you guys. Um, you make it fun, so thank you. All right, that's it. I will see you guys later. I got to refill my coffee, and they're going to shut me down here, so I'm not going to have internet. So I will see you guys later. No, we're not sponsoring. We're not sponsored by Lego Brick Mania. You're ruining my channel. <laughs> I'll see you guys later.